We must remember <coughs> that the Buddha said, let us live happily among those who are unhappy. Let us live in good health among those who are not healthy. And wish them to be happy and healthy, just as we are happy and healthy. Tranquility meditators are generally considered to be happy people, healthy people, When you attain the third jhana, one of the characteristics of that jhana is living happily. Sukhan Chakaya in the Patisang Vedeti, we experience happiness physically. And as I said earlier, that the Jhana meditators are living happily, Ditta Dhamma Sukha Vihari, Buddha said. They are the ones who live happily in this very life. Because they learn to use their attention, mindfulness, understanding to overcome their anger, resentment, hatred. So this is a very special training that we go through to overcome our resentment. It upsurges very quickly without giving any prior warning. And this training helps us to curb it as it arises. One who learns to curb or stop the raging anger is compared to a charioteer, a skillful charioteer, who can stop swift moving horses with one jerk of the rein. When he pulls the rein quickly to stop swift swiftly moving horses, he can stop them quickly by one jerk. Similarly, one who trains the mind through the insight and tranquility meditation can stop the raging anger very quickly. and then arouse happy feeling to pervade the mind. It is not by just thinking about anger, or repeating the words metta that we can overcome anger and arouse happy feeling. But it is through constant mindful training of ourselves. And this is what we are doing. We train our mind to be calm and peaceful,
and remain mindful so that we would not nourish the root of anger or resentment. That helps us not only to make us happy, but even to gain concentration, which we can use to see things as they really are. So try to relax the body, relax the mind, and allow this thought of friendliness, compassion, arise. Let it arise at the right moment, leading up to joy, happiness and concentration. We deliberately let go of resentment as it arises. Try always to see the positive side of a situation. We can do that only when the mind is calm and peaceful and concentrated. Concentration leads the way. That is why the Buddha said, Samadhi Pamukha Sabbe Dhamma. Samadhi is concentration. Pamukha means leading, in always in front. Mindfulness is the chief. Satadhipati ya Sabbedhamma Buddha said. Mindfulness is the chief of all Dhammas. But the chief is not always the leader. It is concentration that leads, takes the front line to move forward. Everything else supports concentration to move on. Mindfulness, attention, faith, clear comprehension, joy, happiness, tranquility, everything line up to give full support to concentration. Therefore each of them is necessary. Without them no concentration is possible. These are all in the Janik or tranquility meditation, but only initial thoughts, sustained thought, joy, happiness, concentration are mentioned. Others are playing at the background, behind the screen, and yet they all are supporting. Whenever they arise, just let them grow. When faith arises, let it grow. When mindfulness arises, let it grow. When the comprehension arises, let it grow. But if from time to time hindrances also try to raise their heads, we just don't pay attention to them and let them go. Here is a training of letting go of one mental state and letting develop another mental state. 
So we have to maintain this awareness all the time. Concentration does not arise quickly, automatically, but we have to work our way through to gain concentration. Until we gain concentration, mind remains active. It's perfectly all right for us to develop mindfulness, to gain concentration. And when concentration is developed, mindfulness becomes stronger and clearer, as I mentioned last evening. Concentration supports mindfulness, mindfulness supports concentration. And we always have to remember that. Even if we cultivate concentration, a strong concentration, it has this function of purifying the mindfulness because concentration is a balanced state of mind with equanimity. That is why equanimity and concentration remain to be two main factors of all jhanas, even in immaterial jhanas. Concentration and equanimity go together as a pair like two wheels of a bicycle. They support each other. As they support each other, they support together mindfulness. And mindfulness with attention helps concentration to penetrate the reality to see the reality as it happens. The reality in our daily experience, daily life, is not some static, abstract object, but very dynamic object. It is always in action, in motion. That reality is that which is conditioned, is impermanent. There is nothing in this world which is not conditioned. No exception, everything is conditioned. As they all are conditioned, arisen from causes and conditions, they always change. They have to change in order to exist in the relative mundane world. And this reality of change in existence can be penetrated through concentration. And we gain wisdom, wisdom to not to cling to them when we see there's nothing to cling. The moment we try to cling, it's no longer there. It's just like trying to take a handful of air. No matter how hard we try to grab air into our fist, we don't find it because it changes. 
Similarly, all conditioned things change without giving us a chance to cling to them. And we see this reality through concentration. And uh, any attempt to grab hold on to them is a futile attempt. And that reality we see with con con concentration, and that is the insight we gain. Concentration leads us to gaining insight, wisdom, so that we remain always alert, mindful, and we comprehend this reality as it happens. This we see even in the concentrated, absorption concentrated state of mind. Absorption concentration does not mean the mind remains static. It, even in that level, it is dynamic. And that is where we see, we gain what is called momentary concentration. That is, concentration moves from moment to moment. Concentrated mind can see the rising moment, peak moment and passing away moment. These three takes place in such an inconceivable rapidity that no ordinary mind can see them. This rising moment is faster than a billionth of a billionth of a second. Peak moment also is faster than billionth of a billionth of a second. Passing away moment also that fast. Concentrated mind can flow with these moments, and that is what is called momentary concentration concentration that can see moments. Full concentration only can have that insight. Full concentration can have that momentary concentration. Momentary concentration cannot be without full concentration. And therefore, whenever we talk about momentary concentration, we should understand what it means. It does not mean that you are concentrated this moment and not concentrated next moment. Or one moment you have concentration, another moment you don't have. Or today you, this moment you have concentration, and few weeks later, another moment you have concentration. Not that kind of concentration is called momentary concentration. Momentary concentration is uh, the result of absorption concentration. With the absorption concentration, you can see the moments, and therefore, Absorption concentration is a dynamic, active process. When we see that, we will still be happy and joyful. That is why the Buddha said, Yato yato sammasati khandanam udayabhyam Labhati piti pamojang amatang tang vijanatang. 
whenever concentrated mind penetrates impermanence rising and falling of all conditioned things then the person who has this experience is full of tranquility full of happiness that happiness that tranquility can be equated with nibbanic bliss when we see impermanence with the concentrated mind we would be delighted not disappointed we would be glad not sad we would be happy not unhappy so you can see the gradual growth of sharp deep powerful blissful state of mind through the jhana through concentration mindfulness and wisdom so you are in a very good situation now to have these experiences all begin with you in you all this don't come from outside our environment may have a very remote support for this but in a tranquility in a peace in a calm in a joy happiness leads to concentration to try to kindle the rouse through joy happiness to gain concentration and reinforce that joy and happiness when you gain concentration it is very interesting joy happiness leads to concentration and concentration in return boomerangs bringing more joy and happiness so it goes in cycle not vicious cycle but beneficial wholesome cycle and all begin within us in our mind in our heart in our body in our own feelings our consciousness our perception in our thoughts these are the material though they are conditional within this conditional material there is a source for gaining uncondition provided we do we use this conditional material wisely properly correctly skillfully that is the purpose of life learning wisely skillfully to use the body feeling perception thoughts and consciousness to gain inner peace happiness concentration wisdom 
relapse and liberation, liberation from suffering and pain. The whole mechanism is within us. Whole scheme is within us. Entire project is within us. We just have to use them skillfully, cultivating wisdom. Wisdom arises through concentration. That is why the Buddha said, Samahitam Chittam Yathabhutam Pajanati, concentrated mind sees things as they are. One who sees things as they are is the happiest person, serene, calm person, person full of bliss, and try to gain that slowly and gradually. 